If you had to choose any one thing to identify someone as a gamer, especially a tabletop role-playing gamer, a wide assortment of dice would have to be near the top of that list. Anyone can have a spare handful of six-sided dice, maybe pilfered from a Monopoly set, but only gamers have pyramidal four-siders, pentagon face 12-siders, and the king of polyhedral dice, the 20-sider. While some video games, especially those based on tabletop systems like Dungeons & Dragons, use an exact analog of their physical counterparts in their systems, nearly every game uses some form of random number generator, whether to determine hits, damage, or even treasure. A loot table, representing the random chance to get certain items from a container like a treasure chest, is really just a big dice roll. So where did dice come from? I'll take a look at that in this video, examining both the origins of dice as a whole, and how the kinds of specialized dice we use in gaming today became popular. Now, roll for initiative. The first dice were made from animal bones, and looked nothing like the balanced polygon faced dice we're familiar with today. In 2022, a huge stash of bone dice called Astragali were found in caves beneath the ancient city of Mauritia in Israel. Some dice in this collection had words on them that translate as stop or you are burnt, likely indicating use in a game, while others bore the names of gods and goddesses like Aphrodite, Eros, or Hera, all of whom are related to love or sex, which probably shows that the dice were used by people looking for good fortune in their love lives. Indeed, dice were frequently used to divine the wills of the gods, or to seek their advice or approval on what actions to take. While the Mauritia dice date to around the first millennium BC, dice go back much farther than that. The earliest dice, which are best described as misshapen animal bones, date to around 5000 BC, and they're probably even older than that. Dice made from bones have been found all over the world in places like Egypt, Greece, Rome, China, Mongolia, and the Americas. Oh, and despite them being referred to as knuckle bones, bone dice were actually made from the ankle bones of hooved animals like cows. That's probably due to their somewhat symmetrical nature, which made for a reasonably fair roll, though some people recognize their imbalance and assign different point values to the sides based on the probabilities of certain rolls. The dice we use today, of course, aren't misshapen animal bones. Manufactured polyhedral dice date back to at least the 3rd millennium BC and have been found at a number of archaeological sites. Two bone dice, roughly approximating modern six-siders, were found in the Neolithic settlement of Scar Bray in the Orkney Islands of Scotland. They were in use between 3100 and 2400 BC. If you want to give them a roll for yourself, I've included a link to a 3D model you can play around with in the description beneath this video. You'll notice that some of the most ancient dice usually have pips instead of numerals, which is something you still see on dice today. That's because they're actually older than numerals, from a time when people used tally marks or something similar, like pips, to count. Six-sided dice dating to a similar time period have also been found in Egypt and Southeast Asia, while slightly more modern dice have been found all throughout the Roman Empire. Many of those dice were asymmetrical. In other words, not the kinds of balanced cubes we prefer today, but that was apparently okay as the Romans believed that dice rolling was a matter of fate, not strict probability. The Royal Game of Ur was a strategy board game popular in ancient Mesopotamia and much of the surrounding area. A board dating to around 2500 BC, give or take a century, included game pieces and a set of four-sided dice, fittingly shaped like pyramids considering the game's popularity in Egypt. There's no consensus on how the game was played, but you can find modern recreations with their own versions of the rules in plenty of game stores today. A few years ago, you might remember headlines stating that an ancient 20-sided die was found in Ptolemaic Egypt dating to the late 1st millennium BC. The die was actually found over a century ago and only received notoriety in recent times. Engraved with Greek letters, nobody knows exactly what it was used for, but we're pretty sure Cleopatra wasn't using it to play Dungeons and Dragons. Meanwhile, the world's oldest 12-sided die might be this one, made of rock crystal and reportedly found in the Greek city of Patras and dating to around 50 AD. I say might be because the only source I could find for it was a Reddit post by someone saying his archaeologist friend discovered it. Take all that for what it's worth, but also consider that Egyptian D20, which sat around for a century before making headlines, so it's possible that he's telling the truth and nobody's picked up on the story yet. On the more exotic side, this 14-sided die featuring 6 square and 8 hexagonal sides dates to the Warring States period of China between 475 and 221 BC. An 18-sider was found in the tomb of Dao Wan, a Chinese noblewoman who died around 100 BC. And a game book commissioned by King Alfonso X of Castile in 1283 describes a backgammon variant that uses a 7-sided dice. 
It also includes what might be the first mention of eight-sided dice. So it's clear that objects we would recognize as dice, including multi-sided polyhedral dice, have been with us for a very long time. But how did the modern gamer's dice arsenal come to exist in its current form? Gaming's widespread use of dice other than the standard cubic six-sider didn't originate with Dungeons & Dragons. I found a website that lists patents for dice of all sizes, many of which date back to the late 19th or early 20th century. There's over a hundred of them, including plenty for D6s with things other than numbers on the faces, but how many of those were manufactured and actually had relevance to the evolution of dice is more than I can hope to cover. 20-sided dice with letters on them for word games were patented in the 1920s, but the general consensus seems to be that the 20-sided dice with numbers entered the modern age in the 1950s, courtesy of a Mr. Yasushi Ishida of the Tokyo Shiba Uda Electric Company. They were patented and distributed by the Japanese Standards Association, quote, for demonstrating the principles of statistical quality control. These dice, and later ones produced in the 60s by the U.S. Naval War College for wargaming simulations, had the numbers 0 through 9 printed on them twice, and were often used to generate numbers from 1 to 100 using one die as the 10s and another as the 1s. A d20 with 20 different digits on it first came about in 1963 as part of the game Zaz, made by Freda Sidney Siv. In addition to the d20, Zaz also used a 4-sider, 6-sider, 8-sider, and 12-sider. Siv is a fascinating individual in the history of dice. She made a number of other unusual products through her company Advertising Attractions Inc., like a D12 with calendar months on the faces. Oh, and by the way, she was also a concert pianist. Let's see Gary Gygax match that skill set. Speaking of Gygax, he's widely hailed as the creator of Dungeons & Dragons, though the credit should probably be shared between him and Dave Arneson. But it might be another early D&D player, Dave Wesley, who's the one responsible for introducing polyhedral dice and forever changing how we game today. In 1971, Arneson ran the first fantasy role-playing game, Blackmoor, which was based off Wesley's historical Bronstein campaigns. One of the players in that game, Greg Svensson, wrote in 2009, Dave Arneson did tell me that he found a set of polyhedral dice on his trip to England, but that was before I met him and I never saw that set of dice. We used six-sided dice in the early Blackmoor days. We were even using D6s when we started playtesting the new D&D rules in mid-1973. My understanding is that Dave Wesley is the person who found the polyhedral dice in an educational supply catalog and showed them to Gary Gygax, who liked them and adopted them for D&D. Whether Svensson's understanding of an event that happened about 40 years prior is totally accurate is a topic you could debate. Here's a photo that I couldn't find a source for that appears to show a museum display with a sign that agrees with Svensson's claim though other sources I've found credit Arneson with being the one who introduced the dice to Gygax in D&D. Even Svensson himself admits that Arneson discovered those kinds of dice, so there might be some room for interpretation. Something you'll notice that's missing from these early days of RPGs is the ten-sided die. Several versions of a ten-sider were patented around the turn of the 20th century, again you can find all of those on that website, but the modern D10 didn't come about until 1980 when it was invented, or maybe reinvented, by game science. This allowed players to stop using multiple 20-siders for their 1 to 100 rolls, but it wasn't until a decade later that D10s with multiples of 10s first hit the scene, also by Game Science, making so you wouldn't need to roll two different looking D10s and declare which one was the 10s die and which was the 1s die. Since then, we've seen plenty of other dice in mass production, D30s, D100s, even 48 and 120-sided dice, and there are probably other more obscure games throughout the years that use oddly shaped or numbered dice, but rather than trying to find the exact first time all of these kinds of dice were used, I've tried to lay out the most direct route that led to the dice we use today. But if you think I missed something important, let me know. Whether you own 8 dice or 800, or maybe none at all, there's no denying the role dice have had on the games we play. They've existed in countless variations since animal bones were first used all those thousands of years ago. And while we may never know about all of them, it's fascinating to me to look back on what we do know about a common gaming tool that we usually take for granted. Thank you so much for watching this video about dice. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos about the true history of common gaming elements. Till next time, may you never step on a D4. Seriously. Well, things are worse than Caltrops.